I'm going to start way back with this one. So this is a piece called Blue that I did when I was 20. Um, and <laughs> this is the only little image that I have of this. It's, uh, it, I, it was big. It was like three feet by four feet. Um, watercolor, uh, charcoal, mm, oil, uh, chalk pastel. I mean, I, I, I put a lot, it, mixed media is what we would call that. And, and so when I look at this, the reason I'm including it, <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'm not going to show every piece I did from the age of 20, um, but that <laughs> this piece is really important for me because I see that there's a couple of things. I've got a grid, a structure that is there. Language is very much a structure that is always in my work. And I do love a grid. Um, so in, and that's part of the graphic design aspect as well. Um, so in this, we've got that grid and then the manipulating and breaking of the grid, the gestural mark making is there. And, and for me, that's, that's interesting to see that that early on, it was, it was part of my mm, vocabulary, my mark making, the, the, the moves that I would be doing. Um, and it's blue, and I use a lot of blue paint, as you will see. So, skip forward, and what we'll see is that, um, so that was, that was kind of stuff I was doing early 20s, um, abstract, um, and then for about eight years, as I said, my, my work was much more um, installations, mm, sort of research, and what I was doing was, so when I talk about installations, it was paintings, drawings, text, photos, objects, an experience, right? I, I, we're talking the 80s, early 90s. So if you remember installations from back then. Um, and I, I like that art form because it allowed a, a kind of participation with the viewer a bit more than just a painting on the wall. And um, there was a, an interplay that happened with these different components, the text, the images, the objects. So you'll see like my concerns that I was working with um, were women, uh, women in the workplace, very often focusing on garment industry and needle trades. So why, why garment industry? Um, well, <laughs> uh, artists, studios, and garment industries have a very long history of being in the same industrial spaces, often. I found that um, pretty much all my uh, studio spaces have been that kind of situation. And I just have always had a, a connection with that. So with the piece that we see on the, uh, on the left, that is uh, part of a series of installations. This is called Poised for Challenge. And in this I did, um, I had, these are, these are pastel drawings. Um, I went into the factories and interviewed workers. And um, I've got text at the top and bottom of each of these drawings. At the top is management's words. And it's the PR stuff to do with um, oh, advertising a lot, but it was management talking about the workers. And then at the bottom right, I've got the workers, the women and, and what their words were. So giving voice to these women. On the right, what we see is a piece called Six Scottish Women. And that is uh, that was my first real calligraphy piece. And you can see I've got, there's a lot of, of text. Each of these documents is a handmade piece of paper that I made, uh, full sheet. And it's based on these six brooches that my mother gave me at one point that are in the family, heirlooms. And, um, and so I created sort of faux documents for each of these. Um, and looking at 
some of the names from my family and then creating, okay, a date, a fictive date, a place, occupation, and a bit of a story about that person. So as I was doing Six Scottish Women, this, um, you know, I, I paid attention to the writing style, but again, I was self-taught in, in that aspect, but I enjoyed doing it to such a degree that I thought, well, keep that in mind and, and perhaps at some point you really should study calligraphy. Up to this point in the installations, my work, the text work was either hand-drawn, um, sometimes letter set, um, computer generated, um, you know, or vinyl letters, that type of thing. So a real, a real mix of, of stuff. And then uh, in Ireland, I was over in Ireland in 89 and 91, and it was about lace making. And so the piece at the bottom is a very large drawing of a photograph of a convent school where they were making lace. And I've given them all names. And the names are in fact students from the, from the convent, but that they didn't, I, I just mi mixed them up, right? It's all, it's kind of fiction, history fiction. Um, and the pieces at the top, these are three collars. Uh, they are large sheets of paper that I covered with charcoal and then erased out in order to get the collars. So they're pretty, there's a little bit of white pastel in there as well, but for the most part, it's subtractive drawing. They don't have any text, those ones, the, the collar pieces. So this was in Ireland and, um, and then Around that time is when I moved to, to Montreal. Um, and art kind of took a little bit of a back seat because I had kids. And uh, during that time, I went back to work in graphic design full time in editorial, working with books. So, you know, there's a gap. There is a gap as there is in many artists, uh, women artists, lives and careers. So when I got back to, to doing artwork, um, something that came up was, was the abstraction that I had been doing before. The letters are always there. And as I haven't mentioned at this point, but landscape was something that I did, but never exhibited before. Um, and so it would be plein air, sketchbooks, that type of thing, but not, not my main artwork. Well, that changed at this point. And uh, so it was during this, this period that I decided, okay, I'm going to start learning calligraphy. And so what I did was I had the opportunity to study with a, an amazing calligrapher, a teacher from France, Yannick Durand was her name. And so I was, I was with her group. Um, she taught here in Montreal and uh, I was on the Tuesday night bunch and we were the more advanced group perhaps. And um, I really enjoyed that because, you know, I, I understand that if one is going to do gestural letter forms and, and enjoy that mark that happens in calligraphy, uh, it's like music. You have to learn, you have to learn the basic stuff. You have to know the scales. You have to be able to do all of that structure. So I spent a lot of time doing learning traditional calligraphy, which I don't exhibit, but at the same time, it allowed me to understand all of the movements that are happening in the, in the brush strokes or, or the pen strokes. And um, all through that time, I started to get back into painting, incorporating these marks, and it was much more abstract what emerged was this dialogue between the text and the imagery. So the one on the, on the left here, La Feuille Jaune, and an interesting thing is all of my text is in French. So my calligraphy text is it for a very long time has been uh, completely in French, partly because it was a social thing as well, I think. 
and I was I had just moved here to Montreal and wanted to immerse myself in that. So it was a bit of that. Um, La Feuille Jaune here on the left. And then this one on the right, that little small piece is uh, a quote from Victor Hugo. And it is the alphabet, c'est l'alphabet écrasé par l'univers. So the alphabet squashed by the universe. Uh, and I've piled up the letters. So A to Z is there. That's what you're looking at is the alphabet. So already you can see, okay, like you can't tell that that is A to Z. And it may not be that important for you to know that. It is for me, it's there. And it's making the marks that are there. They are no longer, the, the, the shapes of the letters have been freed. They're no longer just, just doing a, a, a one-way kind of movement of, of message being relayed to the viewer. You're having to work a bit more in this stuff. Okay, it's a little bit more interactive perhaps. So here's some examples of uh, some of my work from this period where um, some of it very, very designy, very graphic, uh, the middle piece for sure. Um, first one on, on the left is called Apropos. And uh, so, and, and then we start to see some watercolor and layered textured stuff happening, um, the text as a layer on top of that. So that was while I was studying with Yannick, that, that stuff was going on. And here I am in Montreal, a West Coast person, um, very much missing the ocean. And so, oops, we were person in, um, very much missing the ocean and realizing that, okay, the, the fleuve is all very nice, but I need to get out to the Maritimes. And uh, so that started you know, my summers out there in generally Cape Breton. And so I started to do paintings of the ocean of seascapes, but these are, uh, the two on the outside are, they're not huge. They're part of a big series. Uh, I think they're like, yeah, they're not huge, 14 inches each uh, square. And, the one in the middle is uh, six feet tall. It's a watercolor, six feet tall. I did it on a roll of paper. And um, so that's, yeah, they're, they're kind of straight up seascapes and not. Um, very, very gestural arm movement at that scale. Definitely the, the, uh, the body is involved in creating these marks. So the calligraphy stuff continues. What, what happened was that, um, and, and this, you know, the, the landscape or seascape and abstraction is basically what my, my work is about. And uh, with, with the calligraphy, unfortunately, Yannick died uh, at a very early age. And um, her students, her advanced students, there's a group of us got together. We were the ones from the Tuesday night, Les Calligraphes du Mardi, the Calmar. And Calmar is also a squid, which has its own ink. There's just so many connections. Um, and we created this group, a collective, um, and worked together. So for 12 years, we met every single week. And worked together, um, put on exhibitions. Um, we took turns sort of directing the group um, like a collective would. And, and uh, so doing traditional and contemporary work, really exploring stuff. So this is some of my stuff through that period. Um, on the left, I'm a big walker. And so this one is about walking in Montreal. I'm often up on the mountain. And uh, alors, alors je m'en allais. So, so I'm going to get going here, it says. 
And these are all just words to describe walking. And I've got the map of Mont Royal. It's, a, it's an image transfer I did of uh, you know, an old map of Montreal. Um, on the right is a piece much more designy perhaps. And the curve is where the text is. And it's, it's just one of my, my ones that is stream of consciousness writing, talking about what do I have to share? What, what is it that I have to share with people? And, and in fact, on the one on the left, you see my obsession with lists, don't you? <laughs> so again, talking about um, walking and thinking, uh, this is a quote from Robert Louis Stevenson, another good walker. And, um, and it's about, it's just about the act of, of walking and traveling and how it will get you out of your sense of comfort of where you are. That, that idea of exploring the unknown. So a lot of this work is ink and um, sometimes watercolor, sometimes uh, hand grant line. And I make my, my own watercolors very often in this because in calligraphy and illumination, uh, we use pigments. And so this is handmade watercolor from the pigments. All right, here's a couple of pieces where we see much more the text. So the one on the left, it's actually at the Visual Arts Center in the office, is in, it's entirely composed of text. And it's peindre la parole, to paint the spoken word. Um, and so at the top, in white, there are, there are words. There are words here, and it's all, it's very, it's about talking, it's about painting, it's about language and expression. And it looks very landscapey, but it's not necessarily. And the one on the right is, um, that one is Dans, dans l'intervalle entre deux tons. So this is about those in-between spaces. And it's a quote of Rilke. I've used him a number of times. And um, so I just liked what that talks about of, you know, in watercolor, we look at negative space. We're always concerned with the negative space. In calligraphy, we have the counterform. We have the space between the letters and in the, like the letter O and B, you know, in, in those holes, in those shapes, you have to be very aware of them. And so this idea of being between things is, is quite nice. So here is um, Les Calmars um, when we were, had been together 10 years and we had put on, well, I think six or seven exhibitions before that. And we decided to do one to, to really talk about our 10 years and to create a book. So um, this down here at the bottom left, that is three very large, large letters that are three dimensional. Um, that were created. This is one of our collective pieces. We'd often do work that was collaborative together. And um, so I created these big styrofoam letters that, that uh, were on the wall, very sculptural. And then we produced the book and it took quite some time to get the book together. And I'm very proud of this book. I think it's, uh, it, was, it was a lovely, a lovely thing to do. Um, the group is no longer a group, um, but so we lasted 12 years. It's kind of like a rock and roll band, you know, kind of lasted this band. We're all friends still, though. It's fine. Um, and um, yeah, so this, this was a, a very big endeavor to try and do a, do a book that would, would show a little bit about each of our work, but also situate what we were doing in, in more of a global context. And, there, and there's a lovely essay in the book um, 
by a woman in, in France who has, it's a short essay, but it's a, a really good one, um, which talks about our concerns in contemporary calligraphy and using letters and letter forms in a different way. And uh, so here's two of the pieces that you could see, like if I go back here, this is just my four that are on the wall there. And here you see them a bit closer. One on the left, improvisation, and the one on the right is intercis. So this again, the space is between, the space is in between. And, and there's text. Um, I'm talking in the one on the right, there's two words that are written in there. It says something and it says nothing. Those are the two words. So throughout all of this, I'm gonna go back into the, the landscapes and abstraction, and you'll see that the text aspect um, is sometimes there very, very clearly, um, and other times, no, it's just part, it becomes perhaps just part of the gestural mark making, um, but in this, series of, of small images here, they're, they're not very big. These are coastal walks, it's called, and um, there's text in there. So I think I can highlight here. So that will be a word, that is a word there. You can see, you can just see little bits um, that are, there are words. And so what I, the words are, is they are just, describing, in a way, the lay of the land and what you're seeing. You know, they don't say ocean, and, but they talk a, a bit more descriptive about, um, about what it is, the, 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 the cliff going down to the sea, that type of thing. And there is no text, per se, on the one on the right, but for me, it's, it's very much um, marks with the brush moving through space. Here's a couple of pieces that have, um, again, we're, you know, back with the ocean uh, often. Um, and there is some text on the one on the left. And the one on the right, you can see at the bottom, just barely, barely, it says, quand, quand j'arrive au bord de la mer, when I get to that edge of the ocean. And um, so often I will take the viewer, not so much standing on the beach, but in the water. And we'll just plunge in there. So uh, both of these pieces are fairly small. They're not, they're not large ones. And um, monoprint and ink on the left, and then um, watercolor and ink on the right. This is a series of four pieces that for me it works as one and um, they are really the the landscape the seascape the text and abstraction all there together <laughs> um, and the colors are not perhaps what you would expect where you would expect them so they they seem to be a bit more abstract than perhaps a uh, straight up landscape would be. And I, I, for me, they're much more abstract, these pieces. This is, um, I've done a number of very large watercolors and you can see, you get a sense of the scale of this one. It's one of the full, it's not, it's not just a 22 by 30 sheet, it's the, I think they're 30 by 40, the big, big guys. Um, and um, yeah, so I played with pigments and watercolor and charcoal and ink in this. So for, for the most part, my work is, is that, uh, also acrylics sometimes, um, which is water-based. And I work primarily on paper 
varying sizes. Some, some of the pieces that you've seen are, are very small and then others are quite, quite large. So they demand, I work on the floor. So they will, they demand like a full, a full dance around. It's choreographed um, painting these. And, and so, yeah, a big, I, I like to, to change the scale quite a bit on these. So in a way, this is a straight up seascape, but not really. When you, when you go in closer and you look, um, the, the hills here, the, the rocks, um, they're, just, they're just marks with, with ink. And uh, they're just a brush stroke, in fact. That's what they are. So this is on the left is uh, Bergeron, Grand Bergeron. So it's the, th that's the fleuve. And this is where it's like, oh, it starts to get really interesting here with those big rocks going down to the water. And uh, you, know, you've, you can see the whales from these rocks. And in, the, in those craggy rocks, I have played with letter forms and just, just the idea of, there aren't words, there aren't exactly words in this one, but um, sort of gestural movement that creates the, the cracks, the, the mosses, all of that type of thing. Um, and it's a, it's a big painting. And the one on the right is approaching the shore. So there is text all the way in that curve going going into the water. And this is just ink on, on full sheet of paper. So the, the text is, you know, you could, if it's right in front of you, the, if the image is right in front of you, you can spend some time and read it and guess at what it's saying. But the, the words, they're part of the process. They're part of my, the way I'm making the marks and thinking and talking to myself as I'm working. So these are two images. The one on the left, um, well, there's a diptych on the right. The one on the left is Wordsworth. Okay, and um, it's trying to connect the landscape to the quiet of the sky. And so I've written the word connect in the sky. So you can see it reading up and reading down, but they just become very big graphic shapes. And there again, I'm, I'm much more aware of the spaces between than the actual letters that are there. Okay. And the, you know, they, they create their own graphic element, uh, which is quite strong. And then the landscape itself is just barely, barely there, uh, not even needing to be so, so strong. And then this diptych on the right uh, is, this one I think is at Artotec and, and it is uh, it's Constable's words. So I've quoted John Constable love his, his paintings, uh, the sky images. And, uh, and, the, and so I've, I've used, so it's ink and watercolor. And just I, when I use watercolor, I don't always wet the paper completely, but I do use a lot of water and, and flow, flow the water around with, with the color. Um, so here you can see that there's, there are bits of text, absolutely not legible. So that's, that's sometimes a, a question, like do I, the, here we have two very different approaches where the, the one on the left, the connect one, it, you can read it very graphic, that, that dark, bold, those shapes up in the, in the center, in the sky. Um, but I've made sure that you can read the little text. So when I want to play with that, 
if I find that it's important for me that the viewer can read it and understand that, I do, I do <laughs> make an effort to have it <laughs> legible. Um, but in something like the, the ones, the two on the right, no, I don't think that you need to know Constable's words, exact words that are there. The title is Constable's Words, and that might be enough for this one. So we'll, we'll have a look at uh, that. Now, this is uh, it's called In Three Movements, and much more abstract, designy perhaps. Um, this is in fact a very small painting that has been blown up, um, uh, photographed and blown up about, I don't know, six times the size of what it, uh, it initially was and is uh, on the wall of a, in, a, in an apartment building um, in the communal space. But it's, the words are, are there and there, and there again, it's me just doing lists and um, sort of stream of consciousness writing but thinking very much about three movements and music, okay? There's a lot of rhythm when we talk about calligraphy and we, we, with language in general, there's rhythm. Um, and as soon as you have any kind of repeated pattern, which we have repeated letters, when you write, let, write anything out, there is rhythm that happens. So this piece is, is very, you know, I've kept it in a very harmonious color scheme. It's not a landscape, um, but it is really just, just allowing each of those elements to connect. Again, it's about spaces in between a lot. Here's, um, to another well diptych, I guess. These are really large. So if I stand, I come up halfway to where that is. So they're they're six feet, pretty much. Um, and it's watercolor and ink and a little bit of uh, gesso. Uh, the white of the paper is is the white of the paper. It's not it's not gesso. It's not acrylic. And um, what I've got here is I've situated you in a very precarious place where you're not sure uh, is it rock and is that the sh is that the ocean you're looking at and you look up in the sky, but that could look like rock and and so. You know, there's crevices, there's, there's areas where we're not quite sure where we are in, the, in this landscape. And um, so a lot of my work and the interest of, of the mark making, of seascapes, landscapes, especially the, the, the escapes, it's that walking on the edge and the aspect of um, well, it's a play, but it's also um, kind of an unsettling where things don't fall into place. So I have, in this one, made it so that you, you're not quite sure. You know, there's a bit of mystery. You have to be involved in the reading of it. And um, yeah, I think, what else do I want to say about these? Hmm. They are, they are, I didn't want to exhibit them framed for one thing, a large expense on my behalf. Um, and uh, so I, I, I do love the paper, the objectness of paper. And, and so uh, you maybe noticed often I will paint right out to the edge. And so you've got, you know, the, it becomes very much a, a thing in itself. So I've used these massive magnets to hold it to the wall. And uh, that was rather scary putting them up because these are the rare earth magnets that honestly, be careful <laughs> with those things. 
Um, yeah. Here's a, a piece. This is acrylic, um, charcoal, and ink on wood. So up to now, I think pretty much everything we've seen has been on paper. My work on paper, different sizes, and I'm not. I don't paint on canvas. Um, not a canvas gal. I, I don't. I never have really liked the the springiness of a stretched canvas. And so I like this. This is wood panel. And I discovered that wood panel is really great. It's it allows you to um, to be very, very physical, very active in your strokes. You can attack that <laughs> that board, gouge into it, and, and you know it's a it gives back in a very different way than paper. Very very different, but um, I do like working on on wood panel. So this is a, a piece that is composed entirely of layer, thin 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 layers of color and text just built up. Um, there's probably like forty layers on this thing. And it, it's got it's got a nice soft glow in the pale parts, and again colors that are not really landscapey completely. Um, and so we we're drawn to this what could be a distant horizon way up at the top, and the text uh, is thorough, and is talking about uh, going to the sea. So the 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 meandering to the sea, the, the movement to the sea. Ah, the meandering line I have behind me. All right, this is, these are another diptych. Uh, you may have noticed I, I work a lot in series. Uh, I've got diptychs, triptychs, that kind of thing, or series of six. That for me comes directly out of working as a graphic designer in editorial dealing with spreads, with page after page, image and text, not being just one painting and then I'll do the next one. So I'm often working on multiples at once. Uh, in this piece, this is, um, what did I call this? Searching, delicate balance and searching for footholds, I think it was, something like that. It's got a big long title and um, it kind of works together all, again, like the, the black and white one that we saw previous, that, that big diptych. It almost works as though you feel that you're on the rocks in the foreground, but we're not quite sure how to, is that cliff over here? Um, what, what's in this space? What's happening up in the sky? Um, so I've, I don't really have any text in this one, but they are very, very large movements with ink, with a very large brush. So that the, I think in this one, definitely uh, any aspect of language or text is not so present. It's become a way of creating texture. It's a way of, of playing with just brush handling and brush strokes that have become natural uh, manipulations because of having done calligraphy. So it's kind of more the result of. This is much more, um, yeah, the one on the left is a series that I'm, I just finished. It's ink, it's only ink um, on paper. And there's six of them. And again, they are big sweeping movements um, that, that describe possible places. So we get a sense of, okay, kind of a shore, hmm, maybe a mountain in behind there. Is it water? Not sure. Sky or water up above where, where I, so I, I often will have these movements and spaces in the work that is perhaps not um, 
so easily identifiable. The one on the right is, um, is about the fleuve. It's a small piece that is uh, ink and watercolor, and it is just text. And it's just dictionary descriptions of the fleuve. So it's really talking about what the meaning of that word is. And, and I, of course, switched it up and, and taken it out of context and just bits of words. And, and it's, not, it's not the entire, uh, it's not like a Wikipedia type of thing. It's a bit more poetic than that. Um, I manipulated it, which is basically what I'm doing in all of these is manipulating the text and language. Uh, I th think in this one, the, we do have tiny bits, you can see with white, as I have a white ink, and that uh, there, there are little bits of, of words that show up again, just occasionally I will pop those in. But again, you can't read them and that's just fine. These are three very big paintings. Um, which for me have much more of a northern feel, um, le Grand Nord. Huh? It's a, they feel like we, we've got this big white of the paper, this space that feels like maybe is it is it snow? Is it sand? Um, so I have in these played with buckets of water in order to create this movement um, with the color. And then, and then just stopped, just stopped and said, okay, I don't need to add any other colors in there. The movement that's up in the sky and each of them I felt was very animated and, and worked well. And, you know, and I would always start with that place where they meet, where sky and land meets. So here, we're getting to um, some of my artist books. And um, yeah, I think that over the, over the years, well, obviously when I was doing graphic design and editorial and, and all of that, I had to make maquettes. I had to do, uh, create, do book binding and that was part of it. And so an interest in, in doing, making books, handmade books was always there. None of my books are very complicated in terms of, you know, book binding uh, procedures and, and technique. But for me, the, the whole no, I love doing them. And I, I feel that the idea of having the content and the container all wrapped in one, it's, it's, it's really a lovely experience and what it does as well is combine that aspect of this the series so i've got a series of paintings or a series of images and text and i can rearrange them how i want and create something different and that different object and it really becomes a object you hold in your hand and manipulate is a temporal object. It's temporal because your experience in reading it, you flip through these pages and you see a different rhythm. Um, so this, this book was um, in an exhibition called Art of the Book. So it traveled across Canada for two years. And um, it's the text that's in there I did decide to do it in very legible calligraphy. Um, so parts of it are, are quite abstract movement and it's all about the pine tree. And it's Thoreau's talking about um, walking. It's from his essay on walking. And just one little excerpt where he talks about climbing the pine tree in order to see the world differently. And just getting out of, again, getting out of that rut, out of that experience. And um, what one sees when you look at nature in that, in that way. So um, I've played a lot with different types of paper in this book. It's, 
it's fairly fairly large, in fact. And um, it was shown here in Montreal on its way across the country. And it was at McGill at the Rare Books uh, Library. Um, they have a, an exhibition space there. And uh, so, yeah, it was there for a few months. And I, I quite like the rhythm that happened in that book. And I must say, my books end up traveling around the world much more than I do, especially lately, but... Uh, <laughs> and here's, here's a couple of other ones. Um, a very small one on the left called Staring Into Water. And it's, I've worked a lot with St. Armand paper. I don't know if you've noticed through some of these other images that we've looked at, it is in fact St. Armand that I'm working with. And so in this one, it's the, it's the paper folded, very simple Japanese stab binding. Um, the one at the top here is I, I created, I made little rings. Again, that's St. Armand paper. And I've, the binding is as simple as one can get, but I created those rings in order to combine them because I wanted it to be much more uh, sculptural, this one, to stand on its own and be open. It's not so much a, a book that you, well, you can hold it in your hand, but it doesn't work the same way. And then down below, this one is, has really washy, loose watercolor movement all through it, uh, landscapey. And there's text that goes from one spread to the other, always on the right hand page. And then the very last page has the text and it's called, and I, it's just, again, stream of conscious, me talking about walking along with silence. And uh, yeah, I think we come to the end of my of my images. And and so I'd, I'd like to just say that, you know, I'm continually exploring all of these different aspects. 